welcome to our first part of uh, the construction of tables and uh, uh, small uh, small pieces of furniture for bedsides and uh, uh, couch tables and so forth. We'll concentrate today uh, on the legs and the underpinnings. And looking around the store, I found a few approaches that are possible for legs. Uh, uh, what I found, what works really well, is to cut especially stair spindles that have uh, matching uh, symmetrical design, to cut it in half and use one stair spindle for two legs, which is an example right here, and have one, two legs, another stair spindle makes four legs. Uh, other stair spindles um, banister staves are, for instance, these here out of oak, which I treated the same way. I cut them in half and came up with a different possibility for legs. It's kind of like a cluster, a cluster formation of three legs, um, but it allowed me to do the structural underpinning, meaning uh, the structure that keeps the legs apart and keeps them from wiggling. Another example uh, that gets away from traditional legs altogether is to actually use a solid, in this case, cabinet door sides that uh, work in, in the shape of a box. You put, in essence, a four-sided box together this case here, this bottom part, is another cabinet door which works as a shelf for magazines and whatnot you want to put down there. And then again, the top being a flooring sample or a cabinet door or a piece of plywood, anything that you uh, find useful and it may have some attractive looks to it. Yeah, the stretches are the... the uh, the combining element that fits the two legs together and also will later on function as the uh, way to attach the table top to the legs and the underpinning. First step is to uh, what I showed in some builder tips before is to pre-drill with the Forstner bit the holes that will receive the screw heads that I later on cover with a dowel plug. And in this case, I pre-drilled a straight hole uh, through, uh, through the, the, the leg part in order to get my first, my first screw started. So now I have the two legs fixed together and uh, my follow-up screws now will go in my butterfly uh, placement to uh, allow the stretcher to be, uh, you know, very stout. Yeah. But it's very helpful to just give yourself kind of like a locating screw first so that you don't have to fight the alignment of it because an angled screwing kind of like has a tendency to pull pieces out of alignment. Now I'm following the same procedure in bringing all four legs together, building a box. I'll make sure that the table surface is nice and flat, has no bumps in it, that uh, the alignment down here is really nice and flat and even for the top to later on sit without a crack. Okay. Once you have all this firmly attached, the legs to the underpinnings, you're ready to put the top on. And that will be most likely happen from the bottom 
into the top. However, one can also attach it, of course, through the top into the stretchers. Let's look at this uh, little table here. I used uh, just some regular repurposed uh, table legs. Instead of having uh, a solid piece, like in the previous piece that you saw, that kind of like covers the whole area where you could attach an underpinning, I used uh, a shorter, squarish stock here for the top part of the legs. And then I will attach a little extra strip in the same fashion through screws, uh, through the legs, uh, into this part. It creates an open space uh, in construction-wise. This distance here serves the same purpose, exactly the same purpose as a solid piece would have, but in this case you have a different look. As you can see I drilled plug holes through the underpinning for screws to go through the underpinning into the tabletop and of course stopping short of the surface so that you would just have an unbroken tabletop surface. Here's where I used the clustering of the legs to allow the underpinning, let's turn it this way around, to pass through two legs being fastened from both sides. So it's sandwiched in between there, sandwiched in between here, and this part sits right onto the bottom a part of the tabletop, so it will be fastened through the underpinning into the tabletop surface. One co of course could put little blocks in between there and then just get a screw all the way through. But in general for a small table like this it's not really necessary to have the understructure uh, attached on all four sides. First level sits right straight on the tabletop and the second row is spaced just the distance of the first underpinning up. So when you turn the whole table over, it has two looks. It has the look uh, of the underpinning, the stretcher attached right up to the tabletop. And from the other side, it creates kind of like an open space, which of course is a repeat and a tie-in to the spacing that you have between the legs. And these little blocks here, they're of course necessary to create an even spacing that you create in the first place by the underpinning. So this is just coming out of the same stock, the same thickness, just cut in little blocks that then are just kind of like sandwiched in between the bottom part of these legs. What you see here is it's essentially the same principle we have stretchers that hold the sides, or as it was before, the legs in place. Uh, the fastening works the same way. I'm pre-drilling uh, plug holes, sent my screws through there. I'm using the butterfly uh, fastening. You have a stiffener that is sitting this far away from your top surface to give it uh, incredible rigidity. So I use this design actually also to create little chairs and stools and benches. You start with one stretcher and then you put the second stretcher into position. Now this is a little trickier to clamp because we have in this case a five de degree angle so it wants to kind of like flop around um, before the first screw is actually in, so I can just sort of hold it oh, yeah. and treat it very gingerly to get my first screw started. The next part will be to drop the bottom shelf into, into this whole structure. And again, for a little while, you wish you would have more hands than just two 
to get this all holding together, I, I laid it out under the table first to give it kind of like a, a pencil outline to cut my pieces to the proper length. I just propped it up. But in order to really be certain where this shelf really will sit, I waited till I brought the top together, dropped this one in, and now I can see that, you know, if the angle's lining up, this is where this wants to sit. I'm making sure that I have a level placement of this shelf. I like to uh, poke a little uh, position hole into the place, at the place where I will place the tip of my Forstner bit. It allows me to just really be right on the spot without the chance of having the bit slide around on the surface of the wood. So I can use my uh, pilot hole uh, placement in the butterfly fashion at an angle right there and follow it up with my screw and I go all two sides, all four corners around. I may want to put one in the middle for good measure, but four would be actually already enough to keep the integrity and the stiffness of this box that I have created as the understructure for this table together. And I must say that that is it. <laughs>